I was 10 when I learned how to surf. I had friends that got me into it, so I just started going. The reason why I surf is it's, it's a lot of fun, and now I'm doing surf contests, and now I got so many friends. Up, oh, Aton Osborne. Hey, Kurt, it's Aton. Um, I was wondering if you could pick up me, Mickey, and Ryder, and maybe Liam at Mickey's house tomorrow at 8 o'clock to go surf. Uh, call me back in the morning. My name is Kurt Harper. I am 49 years old, and I will be 50 in March. I was diagnosed with autism at around two years old. I live in Santa Monica, California. In the wintertime, I surf up in Ventura, like Oxnard, Silver Strand. The surf's good, and plus I have friends that live up there. I leave my house like real early in the morning. I just want to beat the crowds, go before the wind picks up, you know? responding to the backup. Santa Monica PD advises the suspect vehicle is double parked with the hazards on them. I got my first scanner back in December 25th, 1989. I said, I want a scanner, I want a scanner, I want a scanner. And then I finally got one. Well, I've heard hot calls with it. I've heard, I've heard, sh I've heard car chases, shootings. Um, I've heard foot chases. Oh, God, the favorite episode of the cops. Oh, I love like how they sometimes they'll start tensing up. You know, I always go, uh oh, uh oh, he's gonna start to fight. He's gonna start to fight. And then all that's when all the hell starts breaking loose. Mickey. Hurt ass. Mickey ass. Backer. Ryder. What's going on? Going to surf you, Jetty? Yep. <laughs> How's it going on, Aton? How's it going? Yeah, I heard your voicemail this morning. I was watching cops last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, some guy was kicking fighting last night. <laughs> Shotgun. No, I already called it. Nope. Kurt, do I get shotguns? Nope. I call hey, shotgun. Hey, hey, hey. I call right behind Kurt. Hey, everybody, no fighting. Number, number two. Aton, hush. Three. Four. I thought I'd probably beaver. Acorn. <laughs> Acorn. Acorn. Beaver. Okay, call beaver. me Acorn. Oh, crap, it's breaking so far out. Dude, all the sand. Oh, look at the wave. <laughs> that was a... So good. Oh, no. Kurt, look at that left. So nice. Let's go get barrel, Kurt. I'm out there. Nineteen when he moved into the back. It was my art studio, and then we fixed it into a bedroom for Kurt so he could come and go as he wished. He's 49 now, so 30 years he's been back there. When Kurt was about 10 or 11, he came to me and said, Dad, can I learn how to surf? I instantly said, yes. Best decision uh, that I ever made as far as Kurt was concerned. When Kurt first started surfing, he identified with families that would go down to the beach, and he would make friends with the whole family, and that family would, would kind of shelter him and nurture him. And then as he became more comfortable, then he started taking the younger children surfing. And if the dad of the family couldn't go and take the child surfing, he'd ask Kurt to, and Kurt would take the child. That was his springboard, was the other families. We are a strong family. We always did things together. So he was getting more of what he grew up with. Oh, there's Mr. El Tigre. How was it? It was fun. Yeah? 
Yeah. Where'd you go? Rear mouth the bells. Yeah. Oh. How come some people call it the new yeah. jetty? We met Kurt eight and a half years ago at the NSSA contest. Bo oh. had already yeah, they had been talking already to him all along. knew, knew like, who he was. So I was like, mm, you know, there's a who's this older guy talking yeah. to the young kids? He wanted to take, you know, the kids surfing and bow surfing, and then I, I, I said no for a long time. We wanted to get to know him. Are you gonna take my son surfing? He's young. You know, he pulls up. Oh, I'll be over next Saturday. Okay, let's check this out. We went to Rincon, and I followed him up because I'm watching how he drives, and I get up there, and he knew everybody up there. At that point, I didn't know it had been three generations, or whatever. He's taking people surfing. I don't know, Kurt. Actually, you probably remember. How old was I when you first started taking me surfing? Twelve. I pretty much would only surf in front of my house, which is a really shitty wave. My parents would take me surfing every once in a while, but you'd like, have to arrange a time to get picked up or whatever. And he'd come pick us up and we'd just go surf together. Every generation of Groms grows up either going to surf with them, seeing it at the contest, hanging out with them. Everybody that surfs in Southern California knows Kirk. He's <laughs> famous. Yep. Grom is abbreviation for the little surfers. Because they start bugging you or tormenting, I'll just give them some Grom beatings. A Grom beating is pretty much an older guy picks on a little kid in a, a funny different, way. Different, yeah. Trash can, trash can! I've probably been trash canned by Kurt like three times. <laughs> he fakes like he's a police officer and he's handcuffing him and he's holding his arms back and the kid can't move, you know? Is he an arrest Kurt? Yeah. Oh, they, yeah, they're, they're looking for it all the way. They're, oh, there's Kurt, oh, there's Kurt. And then there's just a whole swarm of them. They'll take his hat, and he starts chasing, and then all and of a sudden then, oh, it just oh, goes, you, you got to slow him down, take Kurt, you weigh 180, 200 pounds, get off that 12-year-old. And then they go back for more. Yeah, and then it all starts over again. <laughs> oh, my God, good. Who's your favorite grounds to beat down? Like at the VQS, I did some Japanese Grom beatings. Yeah. I, I, I did some Brazilian Groms. Nice. You know, I'm not going to name any names, but there were parents that were really mean to him. Just thought that, thought everything bad about Kurt. They're not even taking the time just to understand. He's a 14-year-old in a man's body, and he's perfectly harmless. He's been taking the kids surfing for years. That's his life. I said, one should be so lucky. You wear oh. diapers. Fathead? head? wear diapers. No, that's you. That's you, you have bladder problems. No, that's you, you, wear, you got bladder problems. I know. Thanks, Kurt. You're welcome. The ones when they get their license, you know, they like to be left alone, you know, they don't want any grown-ups in the car. That, it doesn't bother me. All I can do is just, like, sometimes I'll do is just, you know, if, you know, if they're too busy, I do is just move on. Morning. Hey, Knucklehead. Knucklehead, what's going on? I work at William Morris Endeavor. It's a talent agency representing the movie stars, actors, and actresses, like rock bands, athletes, writers, directors. My name is Josh Alvarez, and I'm Kurt's supervisor. Kurt's role here is mailroom staffer. He works where our accounting department is located. He sorts mail, processes mail, does sweeps of the floors. A sweep is you collect all the mail, and then later on, then we'll take the mail out. Good morning, Kurt. Good morning, Deborah. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? Good, thank you. I work so I can pay for my bills, my surf trips. I pay for my food, my rent. I like the shop. It's quiet. And I just get here on time. Everything's cool. How's it going, Aaron? What's going on? Good talking to us. Hey, Josh. Good morning. Good morning. As far as I know, Kurt is the longest working employee at this agency, as far as the mailroom is concerned. I've been working here for 17 years. I've seen um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, I've seen um, Tom Arnold, Bill Cosby, Brooke Shields, John Travolta, Marilyn Manson. Ooh, Marilyn Manson, boy, he looks scary. This station was built in 1987. When there's no surf, I'll like go and ride along, or I'll, or I'll just come here to watch trains. 
763 is right on time, right on the dot. Here he comes. My dad told me about trains. Uh, it's one of the neatest things in the world, you know. Kirk! What's going on? There were some trespassers on the tracks, I heard. Oh, well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Look out for police. There's great trespassers out of the area. Get them out of the area. He's taking off now. If you want to go to Miami, you will have to take the Southwest Chief to Chicago, the Lakeshore Limit Limited to New York City, and then from there, then you go to the Silver Meteor or the Silver Star down into Miami. I know the whole rail system in the U.S. That was cool. You don't have a contest in March, Kurt? Yes, I do. I'm into the beach. Stay outside of the pier. Yeah. Yep. That's going to be fun. That's an old goat's bracket, right? It's the seniors. That's the old goat's. Hey. I'm going to get some more. Okay. All right. <laughs> Here we are. Solid sets. I'm claiming this is probably the biggest day of competition now. New suddenly full, filling in quicker than we thought. All right, I've been riding. Ooh, nice little slash right there. So still about two minutes to go. Well, it's a three-man heat. Oh, me and Tony Foster and Chris Keat. Yeah, hopefully I get to get first place. The NSSA is basically a youth surfing organization. You kind of equate it to Little League. Kurt's been competing for 21 years. I don't think Kurt's changed at all. He loves hanging out with the kids. He loves to put the jersey on, and he really likes being at the events. There's always pranks going on and shenanigans, you know, and, and that's kind of good for the kids because they can be really stressed with winning contests and Kurt kind of brings that fun element to the beach. I'm trying again, a huge win. The kids just love him, you know. Mike Kurt, are you going to go first? In about, maybe about, about 13 minutes or... 13, exactly 13. Yeah, kind of like around like, go out for like 30 minutes or so. Like a half hour set. Sixteen seconds. Hey, listen. Do you want to get beat? Do I have to beat? So, fourteen minutes and sixteen seconds. We still got a little more action outside. Raposa bottom turns, snaps it in the head. Good luck, dude. for coming and all your support this year. And thanks to all my sponsors. And thanks to Janice and Gillian. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Call up the Explorer girls. Oh, if I was gonna surf, like, like say my, my, my family didn't move out here, oh. You know what I would have been doing? I would have been like with the Kentucky State State Patrol State Police. Or like I would have been like commissioner or the or probably move up became the governor. We were concerned because his ashes were different as a little tiny baby. And we went to 
I don't remember the doctor's name. I wouldn't tell you even anyway. And he did an analysis, and he looked at us both and says, you will have to institutionalize him. And when we got in the car, I said, Fielding, what were you thinking when the doctor said that? And she said exactly the same thing I was thinking. I'll be goddamn. hoped that Kurt would find love and acceptance and companionship. And I think any parent worries that when they are no longer around, that that close-knit support group will no longer be there. I think that's what surfing is. Mm -hmm.